and we're back for the draft of game number three. It's Navi versus Team Empire. Uh, we're no longer joined here by Fog. It's myself and Misery. Uh, of course, standing, been standing a lot recently for Alliance Misery. And uh, with that, we'll see the, the draft get underway. It's some different picks, though, as the Batrider and Razor were both banned in the same game. This is going to leave the Lycan out and also Dendi's Tinker. Most teams have been banning it. Right off the bat against Navi, we've also seen it banned quite a bit against G, uh, but VP now uh, out of the tournament, so we won't see that anymore. But yeah, welcome in, Misery. Yeah, thanks. Interesting to see Tinker. Was it banned the other games or what? Uh, yeah, it was. I know it was banned in game one. It was. For, I think it was first phase banned in both games, actually. Yeah. Since it's picked this early, it must have been. Yeah. But that's actually interesting how... They're cool with giving away Lycan for Tinker. Do you think it's a, a you think it's a bad trade or? I don't know. I I guess it depends on how well you play around the Tinker, right? Right. Um, I don't still don't feel like that hero is first phase material necessarily. I mean, it still has so many counters, and it it needs this pretty much needs four thousand gold before it becomes to that point where he's actually a tinker where he can like defend towers without even being there pretty like without being in danger or anything um, yeah. but I mean you can shut him down early and you can take tier 1s early and stuff and he's not a problem yeah but until you get your BOTs and blink we, we've seen tinkers really struggle but you know the one interesting thing for me is that we don't see more like lineups designed to kind of kind of counter tinker either like we haven't seen many clockwork picks against him Storm, I guess, just with his weak laning has fallen off in popularity. And even Batrider is often in the pool when mm. I see teams get Tinker and and nobody nobody picks him. But look at this, though. This is a true counter pick, I would say. The Silencer? Yeah. Can you, can you talk about why? Well, he silences him. And then he can't <laughs> right. use the spells, right? Right. I mean, it's great. he can still blink out, right? So... Yeah, I don't know. I have, I have never really played that much with Silencer, and it hasn't. It's it's more like a situational pick, so it's hard to say what his strengths are. I mean, he's, I guess he's really he's really strong in the lane, right? I'm I'm curious to see if it's gonna be a support Silencer or a core. He Please. doesn't really help at catching the Tinker like that, but he helps at, like team fights, you know, like. In team fights, he's good against Tinker, but yeah, that's. I, I am. I am very curious about what you just said. Is he going to be a core or a support? Because Fang scores uh, has been known for playing his support silencer, of course, back when he was on Empire, and I don't know if I've right. seen them run it since in recent time. But I did see a support silencer yesterday that had plus twenty two intelligence at ten minutes. Support silencer in a tri lane. Like they got like eight, eight, nine yeah, kills. Yeah, I guess in in that in by the by the Russian Dota logic, then it it should be a good hero because people keep dying <laughs> left and right, so you should get a lot of ints. Why don't we see more Pudge, man? You know, Pudge yeah, and Silencer. It's like an auto win draft in, in Russian Dota. <laughs> How can you lose? Uh, the bans will end here now. Now we're gonna ban out the Doom and the Centaur. So mm -hmm. two good jumpers to kind of catch the Tinker, I suppose, and also just an initiator of some kind. That is what. Empire want to follow up the silencer pick, and so far they have zero actual lockdown or stuns. Well, I think this might be a game for Clockwork, considering max heroes are, for the most part, that is, mm. um, for the most part, banned out. You know, he usually plays either Bad Rider, Doom, or Centaur, or Void, like one of those four. If that doesn't happen, then, I mean, if those guys are banned, then it's usually Clockwork he resorts to. And it's, on top of that, it's a good pick against both Fury and Antsinker, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised we haven't seen more clock against Tinker picks. Like, again, I, the hero's never banned, really. I haven't seen many clockwork bans, but mm. uh, teams have not prioritized him too much. Yeah, I like clockwork. I, was, I think he might be a bit undervalued uh, right now. But, I mean, I think Navi should watch out a little bit. Um, they definitely need some kind of team fight, otherwise they could get run over. So what what would you what would you propose like what's the what's the hero to go for here? Um, I think a tide hunter could be really good. Okay, we don't uh, see too much tide right now. Can can you talk like what tide was? I think tide is very much up and coming right now. That's just my opinion. 
it's a Bane. Bane Marana again. Uh, so even though it failed last game, they're still alright with, with trying again. Yeah, it's it's still a strong combo. Also really nice for the clockwork in particular. Like, even the cogs aren't going to save you if they get off that initial sleep necessarily. And they often pose problems for these supports, so... Potent dual rum combo. Who's going to lane against the clock, I guess, is the question here. Do we just see... I guess we'll see a Dendi Tinker mid and... Um, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a Storm Spirit, all right. All right. I'm, I'm happy, man. We're, this, is, this is the old Empire combo. They used to do this... The, well, they would do the Storm, Doom, and Silencer when they had Vanskor on their team. Like, there was... I think it was shortly after 6.81 came out, and they just won, like, eight games in a row with it. Like, every game, it'd be Doom, Storm, Silencer. Just global, jump in with Storm, Doom blinks in, you kill two heroes instantly, and the fight's just over. Uh, they don't get the Doom this time. They've got kind of a similar replacement, I guess, in some ways in the clockwork, but this Tinker will be under pressure. I'm glad a team's at least trying it. Will it work? I don't know, but I'm, I'm happy yeah, normally, to see it. Normally, I'm not a fan of Storm, especially like in this meta game. Um, I, I can actually, mainly because of that, because of the meta game, but um, here I, I could actually see it working out. I would say usually Storm is bad because there's so much team fight all the time from, from, from teams nowadays that Storm really can't contribute in, in, in any way because teams just go as five very early on and then Storm needs more time to get his items where he becomes strong. But here I could see him working out because Navi's heroes don't really excel that much at going as five early on. Um, and he also has Hal, so he'll have a little bit of extra laning presence here to, to help yeah. him see us early on against the Tinker. I mean, this time it could be a bottom core for Havost on the safe lane just to get these really strong lanes and then maybe get a jungler like a, I don't know, Enigma or something like that. I think that could work out. You could have potentially take Roche really early on, on for the Tinker and you would get some push. Gotcha. Hmm. And, the, and the team fight I was talking about earlier. But I don't know what they have planned. We only saw the we only saw the one Enigma. That was the only the, the Enigma we had earlier today was the only Enigma of this tournament. It's Oh right, alright, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's been a popular hero for E. G. in particular, some of the Chinese teams, but yeah, I haven't seen it too much from the, the CIS teams as of late. And they yeah, actually that... they are expecting a, a Havos Marana as they ban out the ancient apparition here for Empire. Yeah. I think that's main. The AA ban was mainly if they, if Navi had planned to go offensive and put the fear in safe lane, right. which is also something Navi could do. I mean, they have many options. Um, it's just about what they, what they're thinking they want to do. Yeah, they have the profit plus one there. If he gets his early phase boots, can do fine against the clockwork early on. So they are pretty flexible, like you said, and that would also give them a little more ability to gank this mid lane and put pressure on the storm early. They could go all out and try and win the game in the laning phase and pick something like a Luna as well and go offensive with that Ooh. and have been... That's not happening? Okay, a Lion. Hmm. Well, they get more lockdown for Storm here. Yeah. I guess that's the main thing. Interesting, though. So they're, they're, they're not looking to just win this in the lanes. They're content to rely on the, the Tinker Prophet duo later on. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I would... Assume that this is just safe lane Dota with Potom as a core. Could be Lion as a core as well. Mm -hmm. Haven't really seen that so much ever. Um, but I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, that's well. That's solo been mid Lion has been seen, but I mean, in this fashion, probably Tinker is going to be mid. Yeah, it's it's like even dating back to like the the days when MMY was playing a carry. It feels like it's been that long since. Occasionally we see Hani has gone mid on Lion. I think that's the main player I remember doing it, but yeah. it's been a while since I even since I saw him do that. At least like four or five months, I think. Actually, you know what? He got I remember now. He got an eggs on Lion and right before he could use it, the, like, the second he bought the eggs, the opponent's GG. This was right after they made the change, so it has like the slight AoE on finger. I was really looking forward to seeing it, but then they just GG didn't get to. That was the last time I saw a core lion. Well, Empire one more pick to go here. Still kind of relying on the, the global, I feel, to, to engage. Yeah. And I'll just stick with stick mm. with uh, more of a utility this support here in the Abaddon. Interesting drafts. What do you think of it overall, after seeing the Abaddon pick? 
um, I think dual lanes, like, I think they're gonna do silence or like in safe lane and storm mid, or vice versa. Like, like could be, be safe lane too. I think storm would be safe lane this game, but, and then have clock Abaddon on off lane, and hmm. just try and get as much on, on mag as possible on the clockwork. By, I mean, it's really hard for them to actually kill the clockwork with an Abaddon sitting there behind him, because every time there's gonna come a, a sleep, even if the arrow hits, the uh, Abaddon can just shield it away. So in that fashion, it's a really good pick. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Is it really their, limits the killing potential of that dual? Their crime. lineup looks looks really unorthodox nowadays. I would say, mm -hmm. but uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. I'll say so. The, the other, the way that I think the response we've seen from most teams when they see this tinker profit is is normally they just go super heavy push, like a lot of death profit picks, razor five-man team fighting type heroes, but Empire are trying to counter it, uh, this global mobility more by just looking to gank them all over the map and, and snowball. So it used to be the, the popular way to shut down Tinkers, and it's kind of fallen off. So I'm looking forward to seeing if Empire can show that it's still a viable option. And with that, guys, we'll get into game number three, introduce the teams on the side of Empire. They took game two, and they did it convincingly. Will Navi get yet another first blood? Will they get yet another courier kill? They have two for two on both counts. I feel like this time Empire said, you know what, guys, let's, this time we're not, it's not going to happen. Just, <laughs> we'll sit behind the tier twos at the tier threes. We can't die this way. Silent on the Storm. Solo the Abaddon. You've got Always Want to Fly playing the Silencer. Resolution will be going mid as the Lycan. He's taking the early point in how to help his team last hit in lane. And Mag as your offlane clock. Used to be his, like, every game hero. Haven't seen it quite as much recently. And then on to Navi. FNG, their new drafter and captain, will be playing the Lion. Vankscore. The support Bane that puts a Vost onto the core Marana, a dying breed nowadays it seems. Funic, your nature's prophet, and last but not least will be Dendi going mid as the Tinker. And they won't give up a first blood misery, at least not before the creep spot. Nope, That's doesn't seem start. like it. They're actually going to go offensive with Bane, Potom, Lion as well. A lot of lockdown here. Which it's... is... Hmm. Are they going to be able to get kills here? Actually, are they going dual lanes? They might actually be... Yeah, they're dual laning. Uh, I think they actually suspect the lanes I was saying. The Abaddon um, Clockwork off lane. Mm -hmm. So they just put the the lane that is just going to sit on farm. They just put Fury and Lion there to... You know, to just get levels. And if necessary, Fury can always TB away. They can't really... The two 600 range heroes, they don't really care about Abaddon Clock. And then they're going to send Pot and Mirana against the... Uh, Supposedly Storm Silencer, but Abaddon's down here, so... Yeah, it's gonna be tough to get kills with the, the Abaddons just sitting behind Silent. And yeah. our, our mid lane will be a Lycan versus a Tinker. Uh, obviously these early levels will be nice for Dandy, and he's taking advantage of them. He's even skilled up rockets, he wants to go for a first blood attempt, not quite enough damage. One more auto attack and a rocket would have done him in, but... Or at least forced the salve out and cancelled it immediately, but barely escaping, and... How down to just two tangos? A long way off from that bottle. A lot of pressure on this Lycan early on. And Dendi already has four denies to his name. Rough matchup. Yeah, it is. For sure. But I mean, Lycan mainly just needs his levels. He will catch up later on, unless the Uligan focus up too much. But um, I really like the, the wards, I mean, the sentry that Navi placed. It, it just shows that they had a clear plan of doing these lanes. Because... Empire really could really use to pull, you know, like with the lane that they have, because they can, they have no kill potential on on part of Bane at all. Uh, so they really need the lane back. Right now they're just getting super out leveled in both lanes. Both Li Lion and Furion are getting full experience, and Pot and Bane are getting full experience, and they get to stack Ancients as well. He will miss this one, but I mean, in general they can do it. Yeah. In general, yeah, they they have the upper hand in lanes as of right now. And the other thing is that they're running a, a silencer as a support, and until this hero hits six, he really he can offer you some harassment. But if you're not able to get kills with him, then you know it, he just doesn't bring much to the table. So being denied his levels really costly. Yep. It's the same with Abaddon. You know they can't they can't move around and, and and help out the other lanes. So in this sense, there's not much Empire can do at this point. They need to wait for the pulling. Even always want to fireport new centuries now. So. He understands that they really need to be able to pull. This is only going to save them like one creep spot, and that's assuming he finds the sentry in time. Yeah. He's got about 20 seconds to this go. It's really bad. He's using two tangos as well now. 
He spent like 400 gold just to kill yeah. this one sentry that's literally about to despawn anyway. Exactly. Oh if it was goodness. a normal ward, then it would be... It, it wouldn't even be worth it, you know? Even if it was a normal ward at this point. He's so frustrated right now. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh god, this he's century is actually the winning them the lane. I mean, winning them the game at this point. Oh Jesus. We did see a double ward miss on a, cent on a ward last time, but that was just like a, a jungle ward that gave vision. This is blocking the pull, and I'll finally kill it. But it's a century, and it's just about ready to go anyway. What a yeah, mess. I could imagine always one fly sitting and almost raging at his computer right now. That must be so frustrating, finding a century after all that effort. Yeah, it's like if it, yeah, like you said, at least if it's an observer, but yeah, no, no such luck for him. And then you look at the other lanes, and it's not like they're doing. It's not like Navi are struggling there. Dendi's twenty three and twelve. The profit is twenty one and ten for Funic, and it's a safe lane profit who's already hit level six nearly. He'll have it by like the five minute mark at the latest, and then yep. the aggression can begin in earnest. Resolution is really struggling, man. I mean, I don't know what you expect from the Lycan here, but he's not having fun. You said he can catch up later, and that's true, but... I almost think they should have sent the uh, Silence of Mid just to harass the Tinker with uh, Glaives of Wisdom at this point. And then just have the Abaddon sit behind the Storm, because that's kind of the purpose of the hero, just to counter the Bane bottom combo. Yeah. And they have rotated the Abaddon mid now, but this does leave the Storm a bit vulnerable. Yeah, that's that's the that's the wrong hero there, I think, and it's also a bit too late because now Tinker's already level. Oh yeah, he's already level six. If he if Silencer went there at level two or something like that, then they would have at least forced the rotation from the lion, uh -oh. and gave Clockwork more space. Silent, gotta be careful. Arrows ready from a boss, but it's not the longest range arrow, and the sleep gets juggled. So do they go to always want to fly instead? Yeah, they do. Star falls there, but the turn might come from Silent. Brings him down, gets the first blood. Then he sticks up. He gets healed up by Solo. Rotations inbound, looking for the bank score kill. He'll find it as well, I believe. Whoa! Auto attacks there, gets the kill. It goes the way of the bad, and not ideal. And Solo now looks to duke it out with Funic. Doesn't have the mana for anything, though. He nearly finishes off the Nature's Prophet. The Triads retreating out with him as the regular creeps almost enough to kill him. And meanwhile, mid lane, onto Dendi goes Mag, but actually, Resolution's gonna back off. Rockets coming through. Only level oh, one, but gets the kill anyway with the Prophet ult. Mag able to escape. What a. <laughs> All of a sudden, the game erupts in blood, and we find ourselves still with a huge Navi advantage. Oh god, look at Lycan's items, man. This is, this is not a good... He ferried himself another him. salve, and is that... Uh, that's That's it. all. That's it. I guess at this point he just wants his boots. <laughs> Maybe gets a bottle, I don't know, but this is... This is a... It's just been a game of rough starts, like... The, or yeah. a series, I should say. Like, there hasn't been, like, an even laning stage any of these three games. And once again, Navi are, are having their way with Empire early on. Just those little things, like you mentioned, like they must have seen something in a replay going for the the rotation up here uh, in game number two. Same thing when they backstabbed the offlane mag in uh, game number one, and again with the ward placement, just catching Empire off guard. Yeah, this this game just really uh, like shows how important the uh, the whole pre creeps is in the in the current way of playing Dota. Like, you really, really need to have the game plan set on how you want to move and where do you want to put these wards and what do the enemy, like, what do we do if the enemy does this and stuff, you know, have all this stuff planned out. And if you, if you don't have that and the enemy has it, then you're already in deep trouble. And this is, is like, a prime example of that. You know, if, if Empire had, had sent the Silence of Mid very early in the game when they realized they couldn't pull, maybe it would have been, it would at least have been a different game now. Um, but it's such a, like, such a hard decision to make because I don't think Empire are playing this lineup very often. You know, this is this is a very random lineup, um, and making a rotation like that with the sounds like it's not something you you, you get you, you experience very often that you need to make a rotation like that. So yeah, it's it's a lineup them. they used to run a lot. Like I was mentioning, they were running a lot a few months back, but it's been this was like February or March of this year. I mean, it's been a long time since they practiced it and. Obviously, if you haven't been running it regularly, then it won't be as polished. And Navi just no, I mean, one thing is running a support silencer. Um, you normally just want to sit in your safe lane, harass off lane or out and stuff. But if you face these weird dual lanes when you also have Abaddon and Lycan in your team and a Storm, and it's kind of a weird game where you can't pull, 
it's really hard decision to make sure I buy these another pack of sentries so we can get the lane back and remove their wards, or what should I do? And yeah, yeah. He tried to D ward and it also, to be fair, I guess got a bit unlucky. Like he just checked the one spot that the ward was. He checked last, but still, it was a nice placement by Navi and. Well, with that said, Tinker is absolutely free farming up to 4,000 gold. He's nearly got his boots of travel complete. And this is going to be like a nine minute BOT soul ring bottle. Pretty much the nightmare scenario when you're playing against a Tinker. And they still don't have level six on their clockwork. But he does have level three battery salt. He rockets in towards Dendi. Actually missing that one as Dendi continues to farm. They got to get this kill on the Tinker ASAP. But I don't think they're going to be able to go for one uh, before he gets the BOTs. Unfortunately. No. They were scouting him with the wolves, but it's like you're scouting him and then you can't do anything because you have no hook shot. So you know what Dunny's doing, you just can't stop it. And now he rotates to the ancients where they've got a huge stack waiting for him. We'll stack it maybe one more time. Oh, Storm jumping in bottom lane onto Funic, but the rotation's coming from Navi. The two heroes that were just looking to farm ancients will be here just in time to maybe turn the sleep. On the Storm, they'll bring in the Lion as well. He's extremely low HP, but he's still coming to help this fight. And they'll end up killing off the Abaddon. Now chasing Silent. Brain Sap ready. Courier rise with a bottle. Yeah, that Lion of FFNG TP'd in with just enough mana for an Impale. That's how badly they wanted that kill. But now he's going to be given the, the bottle of Dendi. Uh, for a little bit of regen. And he'll back off, so getting close to level 6. Resolution finally getting a little momentum in this mid lane as Dendi starts to farm and angling his march nicely to maximize the damage on the Ancients here. He'll get his BOTs. He's going to work on the Blink Dagger even. By the time this is done, he's going to have like a thousand gold or close to it with the BOTs. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's really fat. That's uh, as fat as you can get, potentially, on Zinker. This is a concern. <laughs> to put it mildly. Yeah, it really is. Wow, what they kind of, with this land, they kind of needed a really good start for the, both the Storm and the Clockwork. Um, and Clockwork was not given much space, and like the Storm, I guess Storm had a decent start. But yeah. uh, there's just so much you can do. I mean, he needs to gang both. He needs to gain the Tinker most of all, but he's already pressured so much from the laning phase, uh, from the main bottom down there. And, it's not that easy to just go and kill a Tinker. Nice defensive sleep bottom lane. Right as Silent jumped out of score. He doesn't have enough mana for another Remnant. Well, he will, but he, he would have lost all his mana, not been able to zip out. He gets shielded by Solo, but Solo doesn't have his ult yet. Actually, he hit level 6, but he skilled Curse of Avernus. He panicked, I guess, and skilled their own ability. Probably would have gone out anyway. But still, just a costly death there and miss skill. And Silent nearly finished off by Dendi, who's just going to look to run him down. He'll have to juke into the trees. Doesn't have anywhere near enough mana to TP out. One more march, we'll finish him, and they'll look for Vision here with the Sprout. The march, or the rocket rather, will connect with that, that ground Sprout for Vision. And yet another death for Empire. This is this game is falling apart for them in a hurry. And now they bring Mag mid, hoping for a pickoff, but do they find anyone? Oh, maybe they do get the Tinker. He BOTs in on the lane. This hookshot absolutely must hit. They need the kill while they're waiting for it. They end up killing off Always Wanna Fly with an arrow into... Well, not even an arrow, just nukes it looks like. And they get the tower bottom. Just even with that mag rotation, couldn't find a good opening to go on the Tinker. No. That's an absolute mess right now for Empire. He wouldn't even have died, I think, you know, because he's under the tower. He could just use his rocket and laser and just man fight him. Would have probably even killed him if he hit the hook. That's bad. When you see a t when you see a Tinker just TPing into his own tower, you've two heroes pushing the lane. And your clock in position, and you just don't even feel like you can take him out at that point. And now they're moving Dendi all over the place with the Treants. He starts spamming rockets. Silent will disjoint one with the nicely timed zip, but it's still just constant pressure on the lanes. And this frees up the rest of Navi to get aggressive, which FNG is doing now. He's hasted, and he's streaming in bottom lane. He's got finger ready to go. It's solo. Well, it's sitting behind the, the storm still, but... This is that phase of the game, Misery, where you want to be ganking the Tinker, not constantly being worried about yeah. getting ganked. Yeah, exactly. You want to... I guess their lineup could have... I don't know. Their lineup could have potentially been really good at fighting at this point. You know, if Clockwork had uh, some threats and on his way to a Blade Mail and Storm had 
had snowballed as hard as Tinker is doing right now, he could have been close to an Orc hit as well, and in that, in that sense, it, it could have been going the other way around, but it required perfect rotation, I would say, from the from the silencer and the... And Dendy's just an absolute menace at this point. They get the kill yeah. on the silencer, they had to use a global just to kill off the support lion, and this is without Phonic, who's just pushing the top lane. Artie has a Maelstrom up, he split pushes very quickly. And I've seen this a lot from Funic recently. He's not favoring the Null Talisman Blade Mail build that Phone 7 likes to go for. He goes generally for the Bulldog build, I guess, or his latest build with the Blink Dagger Maelstrom pickup. He's getting close to the Blink if that is his next choice. And that's gonna that's just gonna create a lot of space around the map for the Tinker. All the lanes should be pushed in. FNG nearly getting in range for uh, an Impale on Resolution. Did hex him, but already was in big wolf form, so makes his way out. But yeah, with global down, it's like, what do Empire do? If they try to go in without global, gets hexed on the storm, impaled, gripped, and then he's just Tinker, dead. Tinker soon has his Dagon, and he's level 13. Level 13 at 1340. It's fucking, it's super crazy how, how fat he is, actually. Yeah, look at the experience one, one. graph. That's yeah. bad. And it's pretty even outside of the Tinker, to be honest. It's not that bad. But with the Tinker in play, it's... Him alone is like a 7,500 experience lead. Yeah, him and Furion are above everyone else. Yeah, it's, this is not looking good. And the thing is, Navi can pretty much always fight. They don't really have a big long cooldown spell they're relying on. I guess Fiend's Grip, but, you know, outside of that, Nature's Prophet Ult has long cooldown. Whereas Empire, they, they need Global. And Global obviously has a very long cooldown in comparison. So they can just keep on picking fights if they want to. And now the day guns out. They're yeah. getting more items here. Four staff up on Funic. Lion working towards his blink slowly top lane. This is once the blinks come out on the lion, potentially the bane. This is gonna be real trouble. We'll jump in our resolution mid. The grips there. The globals used just defensively to try and counter or disengage, I should say. And the wolves will pursue Vangscore, but it's a, just a defensive global that takes no objectives. Two minutes for Navi to do whatever they want. What do you do, Misery, if you're Empire I, right now? I'm not really sure, man. I, I really don't know. I, I don't think there's that many options for them. They need to try and get pick off with Storm and, and Clockwork um, to get back in this game. But it's it all comes down to Navi being out of position, I would say. And even if they are, it's so easy for them to just like counter initiate with the with the tinker, or if you go on tinker, then Bane can get in and sleep someone. Fury can always get there. There's Potomold and stuff they need to take, they need to deal with as well. Um, There's like too many things to worry mold. about basically. As the tower does get denied mid, nicely done by Mag, but Revo's still it's still a tower down. End of the day, Silent is getting close to his orchid. Nearly has the has the second oblivion staff. Just needs to find the recipe. Um, I guess that's going to be their timing window. Is when he gets orchid and blade mails up on clockwork. So another thing is like even if even if they were to get like five kills right now, they would still be in a prop in a like in a problem with the whole rat. You know, like Furion could split push all he wants. Uh, Tinker can split push. They can't push out the lanes fast enough with with clockwork. Like in Abbott and Storm, none of them can really kill creeps. Um, push out lanes fast, so that's. I really don't see how they can uh, get back at this. Maybe a Roche, a Roche fight. Maybe this is now, but they make their comeback. This could be it. They'll zip in immediately on FNG. Global Silence still cooling down for 15 seconds, but the first kill finally going the way of Empire. They'll get first blood of this engagement. Dendi now chasing forward, looking for Solo. He still doesn't have a point at his ultimate. He's level seven. What? No borrowed time, very unusual. As Mag gets hexed in the river, then fingered as well. Dendi blinking forward, almost got that kill, but didn't quite have it in time. Resolution trying to draw Navi back. We'll force out the glyph, while well, meanwhile the Storm Spirit ends up going down in the bottom lane. Havos turning to fight with a double damage rune, and he will live through this. They get four kills. And still the Roche stands, but only for now. What is this Abaddon build? I don't know, man. But he miss. I th I thought he misskilled at level six. I'm like, okay, well he'll get it next level. But he opted to just max the aphotic shield instead. Sub lane. Rip on the resolution, and and now Dendi follows it up, and that's the death of the lake. And this is just all going wrong for Empire. 
I don't I don't know if I've ever felt more helpless for a team than I do right now for Empire. That's <laughs> yeah, looking grim. And it's That's like sure. we're looking at Dendi with a Ghost Scepter up. He could have Ethereal Blade by the 20, 20, 22 minute mark. Depending on how many kills he gets. Not to mention an Aegis if he needs it. And look at the Rush. Aegis will go the way of Phonic. Who uh, smartly didn't go for the blink. He went for the four staff to, against the clockwork. Makes a lot of sense. But yeah, yeah. Arrow, Arrow's now looking for Magmid. And the creep will save him. Oh boy. Finally he's got borrowed time. Solo does hit level 8. But it's It's been costly not having that ult these last two fights. But also you saw last fight how, you know, there was an opening. Uh, Lion got caught outside the pit. Storm uses all his mana to get this kill. And then he needs to just run away. You know, he, he doesn't have anything else to contribute with than getting this one pick. But they just need so much more in these fights. Yeah, he has Orkin now. He has a little more mana to play around with. And, and a, a Null Talisman that's being passed back to him. Yet, is it enough? Avost is roaming around in Viz. He's about to spot out the smoke. And also will spot out the freshly picked up Orkin. They immediately dust... And they do have Vision of Havos, they'll silence him, zipping forward to silence. This will be a nice kill, and it looks like they'll get it. There's just nothing Havos can do. They were quick on the reactions there with the dust. Well played by Solo. Still, it's it's not the key hero. It's not the Tinker or even the Prophet, which is the one you really want to shut down. But they'll definitely take what they can get here. And even with that kill, uh, he is almost out of mana. So yeah, only 400. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now he's not really that big of a threat to anyone on Navi because they will see, okay, he only has half mana. Now he can't really, he can't kill the Tinker alone. He, like even even if it was full mana, he probably couldn't. But yeah, Daddy has Ghost Scepter yeah. now, so he like he really can't kill him, to be honest. Well, Phonic continues to split push. He's got an ultimate orb picked up. He's working towards a hex and. Once they have that, they're going to have double hex, impale, grip, sleep, laser. Like a billion and one ways to shut down the storm when he, he's going to need a BKB, but it's still a while. And it's just like you need this item, now you need that item. And and Tinker basically can go fat whenever he needs to, can use all his spells multiple times to the storm's one jump. And they also, They're also going to have a big problem uh, getting vision out, uh, apart from the Lycan Wolves Empire. Because, I mean, later on, I mean, maybe in 5-10 minutes, the map will be all dark if, if one of them decides to buy a gem. Um, Navi, um, then they will keep pushing in the lane with March. Furion will keep pushing as well, and the, the, the map will be super dark. Silent does jump for Dendi. He uses nearly all his mana just to get in range of March, which only causes him pain and suffering. <laughs> Takes quite a bit of damage from that. And Empire still, look, like, we have yet to see that global into hookshot into storm jump that this lineup is really built around but at this point it almost it feels like it almost has to be used when navi overextends like using it offensively it seems it's going to be a low percentage play for them yeah the thing is also like if if they were the ones pressuring a tower then maybe it would be more effective you know but because they, they keep, keep pushing into their, their side it's very hard for they're, them to actually use the combo they're gonna jump no, are... they're ready to hook oh hookshot misses for mag what a mess. Now Resolution's forced off the global. Resolution will manage to live with that last bottle charge. He gets shielded up by the bat and that keeps him in life, but Silent just explodes. Way too much burst damage. The Ethereal Blade's already picked up on Dendi and it's, it's blasting time for him. Blinking to the right side. He'll shotgun solo, bringing him down to about half HP. They've lost three. Make it four. There was a buyback for this as Storm looks to rejoin the fight. Then he zips back out. He thinks better of it. Lycan. Resolution the nearly going down. And he's got ult ready. I guess he can pop this to escape. But yeah, they pop back on silenting and got nothing with that. Aside from, well, the Bane, but that's basically nothing at this point. And he might even die. Hex? Stormball Hex? Back. Yeah, Stormball back, and he's gonna go down again. Impale? He's dead? Yep. Oh, that's, that's not good. Hookshot did miss to start that fight. That didn't help, help matters, but I don't know if it would have been a different, made a difference anyway. Look at Lycan's positioning. He just sent the courier all the way to him to send out a TP, realizing it's on cooldown. Now he needs to sit there another 10 seconds. <laughs> it's almost better just to go die and then respawn at this point. <laughs> He'd probably be up by now. Bonica is dropping low, but he's got the Aegis, so he doesn't mind this. 
Another zap on solo, Denny rearms the shotgun and he puts a few more shells in and prepares to go again. Honestly, it's times like this where I almost just want to stop trying to do anything except follow Dendi around on player-directed camera, because he's going to be the one controlling the fights from here on out. There's a sleep and always want to fly. Arrow catches him, Funnick arrives, Prophet ult splashing through, and before the Dendi rockets even get there, they've already gotten a kill. And he's ready to jump in a little bit further. He'll use March on the mid lane, but Navi are in full control of this game number three. And it looks like they, they may well have a date with NVMI in the Grand Finals. The last Outer Tower falls, leading by 20k gold. Tinker, leveling up his Ethereal Blade rapidly. It's a level 3 now, and he's rejoining them. They're just going to keep on pushing. They're going to force this high ground. Solo, slept up, hexed up, forced back. They will lose FNG immediately, but Funnick continues to stand his ground and try and turn this. Unfortunately, Bane gets Mana Bird. He can't use the grip. That might be the turn that they needed. Silent too low on mana. Now he zips down and he gets shotgunned instantly by Dendi. Where's that laser follow-up? It's not in time, but Dendi will just blink out. He's going to patiently wait for a better opening. Hook shot on the boast. He just leaps out of this. Dendi could turn. Where's that shotgun combination? There you go. Right all into the silencer before the heal could even be used from solo. And he can do it again. Empire can't keep on chasing. They're going to lose Silent and Mag if they overextend here. Dendi jumping in. The rocket will follow this one up. Doesn't have mana for the Dagon. He's just a bit short of it. And he'll just try to do it the good old fashioned way with auto attacks. And Vangscore returns with this Fiend script. It's cancelled by, a, by a Empire. And in the end, they'll zap Solo down regardless. He'll fall once more. Navi just running away with this game three. Well, I guess you're not going to miss the birthday party, Misery. Um, nope. Not at this rate. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about how he might have to go before the series ends, but it doesn't seem like it's the case. Although, Havos will potentially get caught out mid. Zipping forward to Silent. There's need two more auto attacks, at least, for that one. Doesn't quite get it. Oh, Dendi goes in deep. Kills off the Lycan under the shadow of the Silencer. And now he's out of mana. He may, he may be in a bit of trouble here. This will be a massive kill if they get it. No, Funnick's there. Oh. He'll kill up the Silencer. Backup has arrived. And now they look for Solo. He doesn't have his ultimate for 10 seconds. That's more than enough time for another rearm. Another shotgun if need be. The Taker's there again. The oh, godlike streak for Dendi. 11 0 and 6. Hooking forward is Mag, but uh, he'll go down to another auto attack. 11 0 and 7. And yeah, there's your GG. Well, a rough way for Empire to go out, but. They did put up a good fight in the first two games. This one was just a good old-fashioned beatdown from start to finish. Yeah, there's not much to discuss after a game like that, apart from... Like, maybe we should have chosen a different strategy. Brutal. And, I mean, sure, it didn't help the way some other things in the game went. Like, the fact, like, the de-warding issues bottom lane and the silencer not moving sooner, but... You still look at it, it's a Tinker versus a Lycan mid. He's gonna require help. Prophet was getting free farm off lane. Like, if Empire had this perfect start, probably had a shot, but they had like the worst. Yeah, re regardless start of, of uh, the the dewarding and stuff, um, I would still say that it's uphill to win that game with the heroes that they had. Well, misery. Uh, sorry, we didn't have a more more uh, back and forth game number three, but but thank you for joining me, uh, guys. Of course, you can follow misery on Twitter at misery dota. Uh, any shout outs? Any anyone you wanna? call out or anything you want to say before you leave us um nope i'll just say thanks for for having me here okay thanks and for joining me misery that's all appreciate it all right have fun at your yes. birthday party guys coming up next we'll have the grand finals of game shows dota 2 league their first event at dreamhack moscow it's going to be navi versus nvmi god black the the coach for navi at ti4 we'll see if he can put them in their place here uh, but before that we'll have a quick break and uh, i think hani might be joining me for that final best of three so thanks for watching guys or our grand finals of Game Show Dota 2 League coming up after this. You're watching Beyond the Summit. Stay tuned.